Ernie Patrikas, this week marks the five-year anniversary of the passage of Dodd-Frank. So what I want to know is the old political question, are the banks better off than they were four years ago? The banks are much better off than four years ago, six years ago, have lots of capital. Uh, they're going to be required to put even more on. They're going to be required to put on long-term subordinated debt. Uh, there's no issue there in terms of, the, I think, the safety and soundness of the, of the banking system. It, it's there. The question is, is it too much? Will our banks be overcapitalized, not be able to compete with foreign banks, and will business shift to the shadow banking system? Do you think it will? You can answer those questions. Abs absolutely. It, Why is it that? Will change. It, we've started it. The, 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 the regulators put limits on and leverage loans. They don't put limits on guidelines. Well, we can see some of that business shifting to you know, hedge funds, others outside of the banking system, unregulated. If you're a bank, you have capital adequacy, leverage, et cetera, et cetera, cost of examination, and you can't compete. Now, why can't these banks compete? Because they're bigger now than they were pre-financial crisis. You have J.P. Morgan got WAMU and Bear Stearns. You have uh, Bank of America getting Merrill Lynch and Countrywide. These guys should have the power. Is it just that the government is limiting it? Oh, it's the limits. Absolutely. I mean, enhanced prudential supervision, key word, G dealing with leverage, capital, other matters, really put constraints on banks that their competitors don't have. It's remarkable they do as well as they can within that. Uh, so the likes of Jamie Dimon, they're okay to criticize the government for holding them back, they're, you know, even after all that happened? I think bankers have to criticize and have to defend themselves. Uh, and they need to do it more. When I first started practicing at, at the Fed, maybe 45 years ago, banks used to sue the Fed. Today, no one dares. The Fed's too powerful. So they have to speak out. They've got to go to the Hill. You know, they, this is protecting themselves. A lot of people are also talking about a liquidity crisis because of the Volcker rule, which recently kicked in. You have a lot of uh, reduced bond trading at the big uh, brokerage houses and investment banks. Could this uh, come back and kick us in the rear end later on? I think it started to a bit. The one part of the Volcker rule limits proprietary trading. There are a lot of exceptions to it. It's compound complex, but I think it is in fact affecting uh, liquidity in the market. Then we have a leverage requirement requiring banks to hold more liquid securities, hold them like U.S. government securities. Well, if you're holding U.S. government securities and liquid securities, those aren't in a trading portfolio. Um, and there's been some blips, perhaps, in the government securities market. W what bothers me is we don't know what the impact is of the aggregate of all these restrictions. It's like a tactical, tactical battle against the banking system. I don't know what the strategy is, or the strategy is too big to fail. Uh, you know, I think we need more knowledge about where we're going, where the, where the government thinks we should be going. Meanwhile, the smaller banks keep complaining because they say they're suffering the sins of the bigger banks and the regulation is really squeezing their operations. They can't afford all this compliance they have to do. Uh, how, much merit is to that, uh, how much merit is to that argument? Well, I think there's tons of merit. And, and one of the questions is, for really small banks, how much supervision do they really need, you know, other than the loan portfolio? But all of these other regulations, the other banks have economies of scale. The smaller banks do not have it. Though I'll tell you one quick story. My mother was one of two people at a two-people credit union, and when the examiners came in, she baked them cookies, and she always got good results on the exam. Okay. Uh, finally, if you were to wave a magic wand or swipe a magic pen and change one thing about Dodd-Frank that will uh, make it better, that, uh, that will ameliorate the situation, what would it be? I would take the Consumer Financial Protection Board, take it out of the Federal Reserve System, make it subject to appropriations, and make it a board, not a bureau with a single director. Uh, I, I worry about an agency that's, that's full of true believers and doesn't have objective balance. And that imposes costs on large, medium, and small financial organizations, and, and not just banks. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming in and talking about it. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching The Street.